Hello everyone, uh, Ross McKinnon here with you again. Um, we're going to be going through this reading on hedge fund strategies uh, within alternative investments. Um, we've got a few um, different strategies that hedge funds use uh, to create hopefully those uh, fantastic returns that they were famous for before the financial crisis. We don't tend to hear too much from them uh, nowadays or at least a little bit less uh, than what we did before. So uh, very much a subgroup of alternatives as I'm sure you're already aware. Um, what makes a hedge fund a hedge fund? Why, you know, why is it different from other sort of equity investment funds and, uh, and other alternative investment funds? Uh, well definitely fewer regulatory constraints. Uh, far less subject to regulation gives the portfolio manager much more discretion in the type of investments they go for, the long short breakdown and so on. Um, also, lots more short selling um, and lots more derivatives than you would get in a traditional investment vehicle. Um, more asset classes as well. I mean, really, we're going to talk about lots of uh, different hedge fund strategies uh, in due course, and we're going to find that even the most exotic investments are not with, uh, not out with the purview of hedge funds. So you got a broader investment base, uh, very aggressive, um, lots of leverage. It's not the only um, uh, factor that leads to more aggression, um, but um, you know, per perhaps the portfolio manager in a hedge fund is is more actively seeking those, those active returns and as a result uh, the investment base tends to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, part of that is leverage, so often the hedge funds will borrow um, often a multiple of the, the actual investors uh, committed capital to try and just maximise those returns as much as possible. Uh, very much subject to liquidity though. Um, if you're an investor uh, wanting to put in uh, a few pounds or a few dollars into a hedge fund, um, you've got to be prepared for the fact it's going to be locked up uh, for a long period of time. You're not going to be able to get that investment out whenever you want it. So liquidity constraints for the investor. Um, because of the lack of regulation, or at least um, uh, an outcome of the lack of reg regulation, is perhaps a lack of transparency. Um, so it's not always easy to see what's going on inside a hedge fund. And the costs involved, because the managers are taking lots of risks, they're taking lots of active decisions, it's going to cost you as an investor uh, the high cost of hedge fund investment. Uh, very much a factor and you need to consider actually if you're an investor whether the high costs are worth it. Um, are the potential returns on offer worth uh, the cost? The returns aren't certain but the costs definitely are. Uh, okay, so uh, during the course of the reading we're going to be looking at six different types of hedge fund uh, strategies. Uh, the first one is equity related, so as the name suggests uh, a big equity focus here. Uh, a mixture of long shorts, uh, perhaps these are sub strategies, we're going to look at them in more detail as we go through the reading. So long short equity the name suggests, a mixture of long positions and short positions in equity investments. Uh, dedicated short bias, well, you can get a feel for what's going on there. You've got a lot more shorting uh, involved in that one. Um, and then equity market neutral. Equity market neutral uh, is going to have an overall beta factor, you know, traditional cap M beta, which measures systematic risk of zero or close to zero. Uh, an event-driven hedge fund strategy is one that looks at corporate events, things like mergers and acquisitions, di divestments, maybe even bankruptcies or close to bankruptcies in the form of distressed securities. So we'll look at those two sub-strategies shortly, merger arbitrage and distressed securities. Uh, relative value, looking for perceived mispricings uh, in certain securities. So uh, the main two that we're going to look at are fixed income arbitrage and convertible bond arbitrage. Fourthly, opportunistic, uh, a bit of a, a catch-all term, uh, really where the manager is using their discretion, using their gut instinct sometimes uh, to try and identify excess returns. So global macro and managed futures are the two we'll look at uh, there. Specialist, uh, very niche strategies. Um, there's lots more than these two, but these are the two we're going to focus on. So a volatility strategy and then reinsurance. And then finally, a multi-manager strategy. Um, it's almost like a, a combination of different funds or a combination of different strategies. So we'll look at multi-strategy and funds of funds. 